50 to 150 f 2.8 on full frame video. That sounds really great. Let's take a closer look. Hi, I'm Joe for Video, professional videographer from Austria. Today I want to take a look at this lens. This is the Sigma 50 to 150 f 2.8. It's the APS-C equivalent for a full frame lens of 70 to 200 f4. I got this lens originally for my APS-C cameras, but I tried to mount this lens on my Panasonic S1. And what I saw is really interesting. You see, I already mounted this lens on my GH5 with the Metabound Speed Booster XL, which gives me a crop factor of 1.3 and it covered the whole image circle. So I thought maybe this could work on full frame too. So I mounted this lens on my Panasonic S1 in full frame mode and applied a cinemascope crop and this was the result I was getting. As you can see, you can get really decent results with the Panasonic S1. What you need to consider is that you need to apply a cinemascope crop and you also have to reduce the vignette, which I did with the Lumetri color tool. Now after I had some time to play with this lens, I know how to get the best results on the full frame sensor. You saw a little bit of wobble of the vignetting since the sensor is stabilized. So if you want the best results on the full frame lens, don't use the IBIS since it can introduce a wobble in the vignetting. To get rid of the vignette you only have to crop in 10%. That's not really much, it still it isn't full frame anymore, but a crop factor of 1.1 is still great. But why did I get this lens in the first place? I needed a 70-200 f4 equivalent for APS-C and I got the newer version with optical stabilizer of this lens. I really like this lens, it has better optics than this version but since it has an optical stabilizer it's much bigger and much heavier so I got rid of this lens and I got this instead. What I really appreciate is its small size and light weight. It weighs around 700 grams and with a length of 15 centimeters it's rather small and compact. And if you consider the specs on full frame with 50 to 150 f 2.8 this lens is really really small. What I also like about this lens is its characteristics. It has very creamy and not that fuzzy bokeh and especially around the edges it gives a nice round image which I also really appreciate about my Helios 44.2. You can watch the review right now if you want. Let's take a look at build quality. This lens is very well built, has a metal mount. The finish is a little bit rough. I don't know if you like that, but I got used to it. The zoom ring and the focus ring are really big. I really like that, especially since I'm a manual shooter only. The zoom ring is a little bit loose, but the focus ring is really well damped and very smooth to turn. I really like that. I tested this lens 
and applied the cinemascope crop. I think there is no other way to test it since you get a very strong vignette when you use this lens in 60 by 9. So let's look at sharpness. At 50 mm and a f-stop of 2.8, the center is decently sharp, improves at f-stop 4, but doesn't really get better above. When we take a look at the corners, at f2.8 it's a bit soft, gets better at f4, you get the best results at f5.6 and above there's no big difference. When we zoom into 100mm, at f2.8 the center is sharp enough. When you stop down to f4, the center is tech sharp, it doesn't get any better. The corners at f2.8 are a touch soft, better at f4 and you get the best sharpness in the corners at f8. At 150mm, f2.8 is a bit soft, it's better at f4, even better at 5.6 and at f8 it's tech sharp. When we look at the corners at 150mm, at f2.8 they are ok, at f4 better and best at f5.6. Regarding sharpness, in full HD you are very well off when using f2.8. If you want to use this lens at 4K, better stop down to f4. Since we have the cinema scope crop, we never get to the far end of the corners, therefore the corner sharpness is quite ok. When we look at vignetting, we have to consider that this lens wasn't made for full frame and I applied a vignette correction for it. When you open up the lens, the vignette is easy correctable. When you stop down, you introduce a vignette that isn't correctable since it's very sharp, especially at f11, f16 and f22. If you want to correct the vignette, you get the best results at f2.8, f4 and f5.6. When you reach f11, the vignette is not correctable. Regarding distortion, at 50mm this lens has moderate barrel distortion, at 100mm pincushion distortion and at 150 the pincushion distortion is already very pronounced. Since it's a telephoto lens, it flares really easily. When you point this lens against the sun, you get a lot of flares and lose a lot of contrast. But I really like the flares, they are pleasing to look at and there are no strange optical effects. What's especially relevant for us filmmakers is focus breathing. Since it's an older zoom lens design, it's rather to be expected that this lens has a lot of focus breathing, as you can see in this test. This lens is close to par focal, but as you zoom out, the focus shifts a little bit to the back. If you stop the lens down, it should be okay. Let's look at the cons of this lens. It's an older optic, therefore the optical quality is inferior to modern lens designs. Also the workaround to get an image out of this bad boy is really cumbersome on full frame. And also you still have a little bit of vignette. And since it's a telephoto lens, the close focusing distance is one meter. But despite its cons, there are a lot of things I really like about this lens. First of all, the specs are astonishing. 50 to 150 f2.8 in such a small package is extraordinary. Also, vignette is a matter of taste. I like vignetting and if you like it too, you won't have a problem with this. Also, for its age, it's tech sharp when using it in full HD. And like me, you can still use this lens in the APS-C crop mode and have a 70 to 200 f4. I don't know why lens manufacturers can't get a lens with 70 to 200 f4 in such a small package. I have the feeling they are much much bigger than this lens and it should be an equivalent. So, so it's really great to have such a tiny lens for telephoto shooting. And last but not least, this lens is really cheap. I got mine for 350 bucks. So if you want to get this lens used, it costs around 300 to 400 euros. So I think it's a good investment. So what's my conclusion? I really had fun using this lens on a full frame sensor. I know it's a little bit experimental, but I think the pictures that I got out of this combination were better than I expected. I wish, I wish Sigma or any other manufacturer would make a full frame version of this lens and it could even be a little bit bigger, I don't mind. But 50 to 150 f2.8 would be a really useful range. What comes close to this lens is the Tamron 35 to 150, but the aperture closes down from 2.8 to f4. And as a video shooter, it's really great if you have constant aperture. To sum it all up, if you want to use this lens on a full frame setup, better don't use the IBIS to get a better vignette correction. 
Even if I won't shoot full frame with this lens all the time, I still use it most of the time in the APS-C mode on my Panasonic S1. This was very experimental, but I think I could even use this combination for professional projects. But what do you think? Do you think this combination is good enough for professional use? Do you own this lens and want to use it on full frame too? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to see more, please consider subscribing to my channel. I post new videos every Friday. I hope you have a nice day and create something extraordinary.